before we take a look at the base that we're going to be building today I'll give you a really quick rundown on what Enshrouded actually is and how the building works in it. So Enshrouded as you'll see here is a really really large open world survival game. We take a look at the map here there is a ton of space here and in terms of building itself you've basically got a very similar situation to what you have in Minecraft so it's a voxel based building game so you build in terms of cubes so you'll see here I've got one two three four five six seven eight cubes behind me and that is in 3d space so if you look at the flame here what we have is a flame that is basically your altar and your building area as you'll see in the top right hand side of your screen you get a 40 by 40 by 40 space at level one and as you upgrade your altar you get more and more building space so what that means for 40 by 40 by 40 is you get 40 cubes out to the right to the left in front of you behind you also up and down as well so the best way to think about enshrouded in terms of building is you need to think in a three-dimensional space so if you're looking at building you can build up you can also build down one of the cool things that the game actually does is that if you build a structure and then delete it you actually delete the terrain that is in front of you so it gives you a really really wide array of options for how you want to build you can build into mountains you can build way way underground and you can build way way up into the air so you don't actually have to use the flame that I've got on the ground there as the start of your base you can use that flame and build another flame if you want to and place it anywhere you like up in the air down further towards the ground and as you'll see in front of me there's an orange line that basically at the moment is my build diameter that goes around me there's also one that I'll reach if I go down and one that I'll reach if I go up as well all right with that out of the way let's get back to the main base and take a look at a few tips and tricks on how to actually build the base itself I'll see you in a second one of the biggest tips I could offer if you're just starting out is if you just use roofs for the base to build on so as you'll see here I'm only using a one cube thick space instead of using the four cubes that we we're looking at before when we were using full bases so you'll see the little numbers in terms of how many cubes you're actually using that is how much resources you're actually using as well so you use a heck of a lot less in terms of general resources if you use ceiling pieces for floor pieces so what you can see in front of me here is the first larger base that I created and I've butchered it now because I've started the new base that we're going to take a look at today but I'll just give you a quick idea of what you can do and this is only sort of mid-level complex but not too complex now if we take a look out here what I did before I started my new base was set up a flame altar in the center here and what I did from that is as you'll see we mentioned just before the orange lines that are around me they're the build lines what I did is I set up there and that gave me an idea of what I could do in terms of building around me and as I mentioned earlier I could if I want to tunnel all the way through that wall but what I chose to do was build a base aerially which we'll take a look at now So to give you an idea in terms of what I was talking about thinking of things three-dimensionally you have to incorporate things like multiple stairs to multiple levels if you want to have multiple levels in your build which is what I have and this is not giving too much away on in terms of what the actual build is going to be because I haven't actually completed it yet and it's going to take a long time before I do because it's going to be a massive massive build However, the main section that I have completed is down here, which we'll take a look at right now. 
So what I've done here is made some little overlooks and overhangs that are basically feature windows that look into the main hall and I've backlit them so they light up the hall itself. There are certain types of stone that you can actually use as well as you'll see around me that give you sort of architectural flourishes and there's different types of stone that you can mix and match here as well. So what I've done is I've used city block which is the main one here which that's the one that gives all of those little nice flourishes there as you'll see just above my head here and also fancy which is the one that gives the brown color there now in terms of the window I've done some really cool things here daytime you can actually close the windows there so that you've got not quite as much light coming in here and as I mentioned this build is still ongoing initially I was thinking the wooden windows would go with the uh, fascia of the brown uh, fancy stone and sort of the whole wood feel that I was going for down here but I think I might change them around just to make it look a little bit cooler now one thing that you can see just underneath me here and this is really really noticeable at night time as you'll see here is I've built this entire base up in the air and that was done by what I was talking about before which is using multiple flame altars building up and building out and then measuring out uh, in terms of blocks and what I did is I centralized myself as best I could over the top and the center of the flame pit here that's beneath me and you'll see just above uh, that me and above my head here is that's the flame altar that's just above me so that gives me a nice sort of central point you'll see I've got those little blue cubes uh, and as we we're mentioning before in t terms of building underneath you that gives me a central point to know where the center of the base is and how far out I can build from here. So what I'll be doing very soon is going through and doing a whole lot of plates and bowls for the tables, which I'm yet to do. Those are just little details that take a lot of time. But as you can see above me there, above my head, the detailing for the windows there is all very, very finely done and it takes a lot of time. But that is one of the magnificent things about this game, even though it's in early access. It's such a fully fledged game and in terms of building, and this is just in terms of building that we're talking about here, it is just magnificent for building. This sort of thing is right up my alley. It may not be up your alley in terms of complexity of builds, like what I've done here, but it just gives you a bit of an idea on what you can actually achieve when you take a look at this game. So to give you an idea, I'm a level four base and that's the start of my base over there we won't pan all the way up to it because it's going to give away all the rest of the building but you'll see sort of that main structure in the middle underneath is the main hall so that gives you an idea of how far you can build out huge amount of space that you can actually take up you could build an entire city if you wanted to and what you can do uh, which is what I've sort of deliberately done is I've built my other base beneath me there so you'll see the line for my building is just down below me there and you'll notice in your pictures here if we're looking at the flame altar that's beneath me I can actually build and overlap the two bases so I can make a massive massive base which can go into this wall which is going to be beneath me which is part of the uh, end programming that I'm going to uh, eventually get to. It's going to take me a hell of a long time. I've probably already sunk about 200 hours into this build and I'm probably only about maybe a quarter of the way through it so it's going to take me a hell of a long time just to get this build on just this building done but there's a lot of details to go through and a lot to complete. Alright well that's going to be enough for this week. I just wanted to give you a quick view of the hall 
give you a couple of little pointers on how I actually did what I have done so far in the haul. Uh, if you've got any questions or if you wanted to know a little bit more about any techniques or anything that I've used, just leave a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer them for you. All right. Well, once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Glitch Gaming.